After the Second World War, there was some movement by some people in the country, in Canada, to try to change that and to put more things down so that when you go to court, you had a better chance of winning your individual right litigation. You had a better chance because it was written as opposed to depending upon various precedents in common law that could waver over time in the various cases that came before them. And every case is not the same. That's the other problem with not having something writ written down. But nothing was done until 1960. And there was, let me put it to you this way, there was a, an acknowledgement that there should be some individual rights and freedoms in our constitution or in our legislation. And so pre, uh, Prime Minister John Diefenbaker of Saskatchewan introduced into the House of Commons the Bill of Rights in 1960. Now, Mr. Diefenbaker is to be given full credit for acknowledging and understanding that there was such a thing as individual rights and freedoms for individuals living in a state, in a country. However, and this is very important for everybody to understand, because the last thing you want to do in this fight that we're in now is to go down rabbit holes, okay? Because you're going to go nowhere, okay? So it's very important. So when people talk to me and say to me, but we got the Bill of Rights, I want to remind you, this was just an act of parliament. Remember the separation of powers a few minutes ago? So this only applied to the federal government and its employees. It was a federal law. But it did acknowledge rights and freedoms for the individual. That's what's really important about it. And it's still there on the books now. But after 19, and of course, it's a federal act of the House of Commons, so it could be changed at any time at the whim of any federal government. They had a majority of seats, or could get a majority of seats in the House of Commons. Then this could be changed at any time at the whim of any politician or group of politicians. So it had no real permanence to it, did it? As we know, governments, especially today in the last decade or two, you know, changing laws at their, at their whim, as they are right now, causing the problems that we have in our country, because that's what's happened. They're changing and using laws, not going back to Parliament, adding more regulation to a, to a given statute rather than go back to Parliament and face the people's house. And that's, that's one of our, our problems. And so after 1960, while, the, while, while that was an achievement, it was a limited achievement. And you must understand that. It was a limited achievement because it never applied to all Canadians. It did not apply to all Canadians. And so from 60 on, there was amongst some scholars and some politicians, but mainly scholars and other people who were interested in constitutional stuff, uh, movements and, and commentary about we should have for all of Canada a, a, a Bill of Rights or, or something like that in the Constitution. 